Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back for another Total War video with The Terminator. Lately, I've been seeing a fair number of players on Reddit and other forums asking whether the older Total War games are worth buying and playing. From Shogun 1 to Empire to Attila, there are loads of great Total War campaigns to get into, great DLCs to check out, and thousands of mods to enhance your games and make them all even better than vanilla. If you're a player who started playing Total War through Troy, Three Kingdoms, or the Warhammers, and you're wondering whether the earlier games are really that worth buying and playing, whether historical Total Wars are as enjoyable as the modern games, then you are in the right place, and this is absolutely the video for you. So the first big reason here to try out the older Total War games is obvious. If you enjoy history, or if you have a particular interest in a faction like 18th century France, 11th century Templar Knights, or even ancient Egypt, or if you're interested in particular wars like the Hun invasion of Europe, the fall of the Samurai, or the Napoleonic Wars, then you absolutely should try out the older Total War games. These games can also be bought on a very tight budget, on a big set or Total War sale, you can pick up a game like Shogun 2 for less than $10 and you can experience a well-made game set in a brilliant time period of feudal Japanese history. Or you can pick up Medieval 2 Total War for even cheaper and fight out a crusade for the Holy Lands. The older games on these good sales are extremely cheap, like ranging from $2 to $10, and at these super low prices they're even more worth buying and playing. The point is, there are no games out there like Total War that manage to capture historical periods and settings with a grand campaign feel that is intricate and engaging in combination with battles that feel realistic and immersive. With cheap sales of a handful of dollars, every one of these Total War games are worth buying, even if it's just to see the humble beginnings of the franchise. History is where it started for Total War, and the earlier games do a really good job of giving the player the chance to play their favorite favorite historical kingdoms and turn them into grand empires. If you do decide to buy one of these older games, if you're at that point where you're considering it, and I'm actually convincing you here, there is one main thing to be aware of. The further you go back in a series of games, any series really, the more dated some of the mechanics will feel, the more dated graphics will look, and the more limited gameplay will be, and all of this is true in Total War to a certain extent. But the truth is, there are plenty of mechanics that have been stripped out of the modern games like Warhammer that are present in older titles and that are really good. The best example of this, of course, and anyone will tell you, is naval warfare. Between Empire Total War and Attila, every game had naval battles, where you can fight with massive navies, in some games even coastal battles, or combined naval and land battles. In Empire, Napoleon, and Shogun 2, these battle types were actually quite successful, perhaps a bit buggy, but still a lot of fun to play. In Rome 2 or Attila, the gameplay isn't as good and can often be buggy and frustrating, but it's there, it's different, new, and it's a feature of older games that definitely makes a case for trying them out. And that's just one example. Older Total War games, especially pre-Rome 2, had proper battle formations. Older games had cutscene videos for specific events like the Crusades or for agent actions like assassinations. Older games even had proper technology trees, political systems, family trees, armies without generals, visually upgradable units. There are dozens and dozens of features that were removed as the series progressed. Many of them made a huge difference to gameplay, and many of them made Total Total War even more enjoyable and unique. The third and final reason why the older games are absolutely worth buying and playing is simply the mods. From Rome 1 Total War onwards, every Total War game has had a thriving modding community in which you can pretty much find anything you want. Whether that's a Lord of the Rings mod for Medieval 2, a Medieval mod for Attila, or Bronze Age mod for Rome 2, or a simple camera mod, or a unit mod, or a bug fixing mod, the Total War modding community has literally done it all, and it's all super easy to install and it's all free. 
If you've never been interested in mods before, if you've been intimidated by the sheer number of mods out there or how to install them, then I'm here to tell you it's so easy. There are some great mods out there. There's some great resources out there to help you as well. It is a whole new world of gaming, guys, unlocking huge potential for your games. And Total War specifically is a series that has a massive modding community. I've got loads of mod video guides and recommendations you can check out as well, so there are are resources out there to help you in this journey. The best thing about the older Total War games is the older you go, barring the original Shogun and Medieval, the more polished mods you get. Medieval 2, for example, is famous for some of the best Total War mods ever made, from Stainless Steel to Broken Crescent to Third Age. Rome 2 has over 6,000 mods to try out, guys, and though recently released, Rome Remastered has some of the most unlocked modding potential of any Total War game. There's no doubt that older Total Wars have great vanilla gameplay and it's worth playing for the vanilla experience, but as an option, they have an insanely brilliant, passionate modding community as well with mod content that elevates and enhances the games in every way. In this final section, I'm just going to lay out my recommendation as a starter Total War from the older games. If you're thinking about getting one of these older titles, absolutely start with Shogun 2 and Shogun 2 Fall of the Samurai. These two games are essentially the turning point of Total War, from the older, simpler, more clunky style of gameplay to the newer, more engaging, and polished Total War. Shogun 2 is the pinnacle of older Total War because it's a transition from the clunky UI, basic faction variety, and outdated graphics to newer graphics, great new mechanics, and better engines, and interesting replayable factions. So Shogun 2 is a good middle ground for you to experience some of the best of both worlds and decide what you like more. From there, it's a lot less jarring to go back to Medieval 2 and see a more basic type of Total War, or go forward and appreciate what Empire, Napoleon, or Rome 2 and Attila really added to the series. The only caveat I'll add here is that Empire is a buggy mess with some of the weakest AI in the series. It was extremely ambitious for its time and in many ways buckled under this ambition. Naval battles are some of my favorite, don't get me wrong. There are some good things about the game, but it's a game that definitely needs mods to really enjoy and make the most of. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you can see that the older Total War games, especially on a big sale for $3 to $10, are definitely worth checking out. They may feel less flashy, more clunky, or basic compared to the modern games that you're used to, but what they lack, they definitely make up for in unique features, memorable gameplay, great modding potential, and dozens and dozens of hours of fun in a variety of historical settings that, if you're interested in, in any of them, you will simply love. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Subscribe for more Total War content, gameplay, and news, and consider supporting me directly by becoming a member, signing up on Patreon, or buying me a coffee. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.